Asus grew impatient waiting for Samsung to reach volume production on its 32GB DDR4U DIMMs, and so the company instead designed a new double capacity DIMM standard. This isn't a JEDEC standard, but it is a standard that has gotten some attention from Zadac and from G-Skill, both of whom have made some of the tallest memory modules the world has ever seen. These DIMMs are 32GB per stick, so two of them give us 64GB at 3200MHz, and after an overclocking effort, some pretty good timings. Two of these sticks would cost you about $1,000, with the 3600MHz options at around $1,300. Today, we'll be looking into when they can be used and how well they can overclock. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair and its Void Pro headset. The Void Pro headset is available in wired or wireless versions, with the wireless option supporting a boosted range upwards of 30 to 40 feet. The headset has full RGB LEDs on the ear cups, has 50mm headphone drivers, and lasts up to 16 hours on battery. It can also be plugged in for wired use, and is now lower in price than when it first launched. A noise cancelling microphone is also included along with an easy mute indicated by an LED, and you can learn more at the link in the description below. As for what it is, this is a double capacity DIMM. It's not an official standard, it's an ASUS designed standard, and only two memory manufacturers presently support it. So uh, this stick, about $500 for just this one, but it's 32 gigabytes, so that's a lot. 16 gigabytes per side. It's difficult to do this. It has to be done by making the PCB taller, which obviously creates all kinds of clearance concerns. Also a lot of signal integrity concerns. Turns out it's not so easy to just add more and more memory to a chip or to a PCB because at some point you have trace length issues, you have signal integrity issues, and also you have issues with motherboards supporting it at all. In fact, we don't even quite understand how this works because Asus and Zadak aren't presently disclosing the deeper details on it as it Presumably, ASUS thinks it gives them a competitive advantage, although the market for this is so small that they might as well really just disclose everything because no one's buying them anyway. But uh, there might be some very, very specific use cases for this, and we'll tell you why as we go through. But either way, this is not an easy thing to make, and it does allow you to theoretically max out the memory controller on the CPU. Intel has validated the 9900K to work with 128 gigabytes of memory. The challenge is getting that much memory in four slots, and these only work presently in motherboards with two slots. So that's where we get some hints as to what's going on. The other downside is that it's presently an ASUS-designed memory spec, which nearly guarantees limited adoption. ASUS itself only has three motherboards that presently support the DC DIMMs. We tried using them with our Maximus 11 Hero with four slots for standardized benchmarking, but found that it won't even boot. Only the Z390i Mini ITX gaming board, the Gene, and the Apex, which is the one we use, support DC memory. The Z390i being Mini ITX is one of the more meaningful use cases of populating two slots with higher capacity DIMMs than would otherwise be possible. The Apex and Gene are also limited to only two slots. Two slot 1DPC designs can be useful for extreme overclocking by simplifying the memory traces and allowing higher overclocks on the memory when it's closer to the CPU. But we don't commonly see extreme overclocking overlapping with high or ultra high memory capacities. In fact, in a lot of XOC instances, max mem is set in Windows to get better timings. This is already an extremely limited use case then. It's $800 starting for the lowest frequency of the DIMMs by Zadak and G-Skills around the same starting price. So if you're using a motherboard with four slots, one, you can't use these, so rule that out. Two, you could get 64 gigabytes of memory, which is what this is for a thousand bucks, at 3200 megahertz for in the range of 400 to 680 dollars, depending on the timings you go for and the memory market. So let's call it 500. It's about half the price of these DC modules, which is obviously going to really restrict the market for these because if you really need memory capacity on a mainstream platform for some reason, because that's all these work on, they don't work on X299, then you might as well buy four sticks, 64 gigabytes for half the price. But there is one restriction to that, which is if you really, really want to use the Gene, the Apex, or more reasonably, you want a mini ITX build. Maybe you're doing a mini ITX rendering system of some kind, maybe a blender system, whatever, that you take for travel, and you really need 64 gigabytes of memory, 
there's a use case there. We'll, we'll, we'll concede there's a use case there. It's, it's a very small one, but it exists technically. So uh, for sake of pure capacity, you would be better off going with a board that has more slots and just buying cheaper memory. But um, in theory, if at some point this could be done, and it, it won't be anytime soon, but if this could be done in a way that you have DC dims in more than two slots, then, OK, now we can talk more about where these are useful. Unfortunately, the way these work, as far as we know, is that one stick detects as two sticks. So that's going to limit that possibility of going with four sticks. Using the memory on the Apex, we noticed in hardware info reports that there are four sticks populating the board. But as said earlier, the board itself only has two slots available. There's some trickery going on here to spoof the memory into working in this board. And part of that is done by telling it that each module is two sticks worth of memory. We're not quite sure exactly what's happening here, and it's not being disclosed presently. Taking the memory apart wasn't difficult, but not particularly easy either. There are only a few screws holding each ZDAC module together, but the thermal pads are more of a thermal adhesive. They're really stuck on there, and removing them requires some finesse to not rip off the memory modules. Underneath, we see two rows of Samsung memory across a couple of columns, one set on each side. This is Samsung's K4A8G085WB-BCPB memory solution, which is an 8 gigabit module. There are 8 bits in a byte, so we end up with 16 gigabytes of memory per side on these sticks. We ran a few tests on a 9900K at just 4.9 gigahertz all core. Our tests were focused entirely on determining where the memory gains could be seen when overclocking. These were mostly with TimeSpy Extreme Physics, as the software is extremely responsive to memory latency and timing changes. This is something we've seen in our overclocking streams firsthand, where a single timing can change the result by hundreds of points of score increases. We also ran some Cinebench tests, although the software doesn't care about timings and so doesn't really scale. And we did some tests with MaxMem, which we'll put in the article in the description below. This table on the screen shows some of our tuning steps. Our end result had us at 3466 megahertz, up from 3200, with 1.5 volts, TRFC at 300, then 270 for TRFC2, 256 for TRFC, TRFC3. We tried to lower the TRFC settings further, but we ended up with a lower performance and eventually blue screens or instability. We dropped TFAW for 4 active window to 23 for now, with primary timing stable at 14, 14, 14, 34. We maxed out TREFI for better performance in 3D Mark, and we set RAS to RAS delays to 4, CKE to 6, and tuned some of the tertiary timings manually, but left most alone. Here's a chart for some visualization of those results. Our results with XMP only had us at about 4920 to 4930 points for TSE physics with a 3466 megahertz overclock and no other changes to timings, landing us at 5138 points. All the steps in between are also on this chart, as you can see in the middle clump of the results. But the final result had us at 5489 to 5508 points, a climb of about 12% in total CPU score. These chips actually overclock pretty well. Uh, they're not extreme overclocking memory modules, so if that's what you want, you should still buy something else. But they do overclock really not that bad for something that's so capacity focused. So that was nice to see. Let's, I guess, talk through the conclusions here. Overclocking's not bad. I guess that's something. Uh, it only works on three boards at present. Apex, Gene, and then Z390i Gaming, which is the more interesting use case because at two slots, you can actually kind of start to argue this, this scenario where you're occupying the only two slots on the board with the maximum amount of memory possible until the higher density memory modules become available to mass market. So that's really the use case. It's super portable mini ITX rendering machine where you just, you're having trouble getting high density dims because they don't exist or something and uh, you have to go with this. And then you also, of course, have to build around this because it's gigantic. And so a CLC is probably the best choice in that instance as well, just to make sure everything fits together. So these let us get closer to maxing out the memory controller on the Z390 mainstream desktop CPUs, uh, which Intel has validated up to 128 gigabytes on the 9900K. So that's kind of cool. The X299 Dark would be an interesting scenario for this as well. These don't work in it, unfortunately. But the reason it would be interesting is because it's four slots, and the platform supports eight. 
So if you could get four of these in there, you have a, a super high-end overclocking board plus really high capacity. And those are things that are kind of rare to put together. So that's sort of, I mean, it doesn't work. So it doesn't work speculating about how fun it would be, but that would be a scenario as well. Um, these are roughly 1.5x the power consumption of a normal dim, of a normal stick, but not a big deal really at the end of the day. And they are very, very small use cases. They are extremely expensive and basically an interesting project with limited use cases. So uh, most people in our audience shouldn't buy this, but there's probably a few people out there, a few of you who are excited about this. And if you are one of them, please post a comment below and let everyone know what you would like to do with these. Uh, we would imagine the most common use case would be a Z390i gaming, a mini ITX build, something focused on very system memory intensive type of processing, but you have to travel with it and that's why it's mini ITX. Otherwise you might as well just big, go with a bigger desktop and then more memory modules. So that's kind of where we see the use case for this, but overclocking is good. So job well done Samsung and Zadok on that. The heat sinks are more than sufficient. You really don't need to worry about thermals on memory for the most part, although these get a bit warmer than normally. and uh, it's expensive. So that's all for this one. Kind of an interesting thing to play with, but that's about where it ends for us. Thank you for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats. The large and the medium version are both being restocked. They are getting to us in the next couple of days, about a week from now. So if you place your back order, they will ship out as soon as they come in the door. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.